So yeah, so I'll have comments uh, in OneNote and then I will um, make PDFs and then upload those and you'll be able to see your feedback and everything. So, so keep your eye on that. I think that's something you can subscribe to if I remember correctly. Um, let me see if I can get a tab over here. I feel like you can subscribe to notifications for feedback. Let's take a look here. Uh, which screen? That screen. Uh, let's see. Gotta get the chat back up and I have to show participants because Haley wants to come in. Did you guys catch it? I caught it pretty quickly last time. Did you catch when someone who wasn't <laughs> a class member popped in last time? I think I caught it quick enough and booted them. Oh, that's not good. All right, so I think you can do notifications in here uh, if we click on our class. So if you have multiple classes, you can choose what you want to be notified for for each class. But if you go up to your name and then do notifications, I know a lot of people have been doing this already, um, but I think you could do dropbacks. Here you go, see? Dropbacks, assignment feedback released and assignment feedback updated. So you could, that way when I, when I post my feedback to your test, you'll get an alert. Um, so that might be worth, that might be worth doing. So, so yeah, so think about that. Think about subscribing to, uh, to updates. Sydney is here. Hey, Sydney. Hi. Okay, so I think that I uh, just wanted to pop that up there. Let me pop over to the notes. We said we would do some more related rates examples here today. Um, Oh, shoot, I do not have the textbook handy either. I was going to answer some homework questions too. Shoot, still not prepared. Uh, let me quickly see if I can upload this here. Where is that? It's in, um, oh, shoot. Because I have to get the ebook. Uh, does anybody remember what the company was where the ebook is? Ah, oh, it's been a while since I've been there. I cannot remember. I'm going to have to go to the news items and look at like one of the very first news items we posted. The book company is Sullivan. Sullivan and Miranda. Yeah, that's the authors. Online course access. Uh, WebAssign. That's where it is. WebAssign. That's the like online. Okay, so we'll get in here. Let me log in. So um, did anyone have, let's, I was gonna start with some homework questions. We should be working on 4.1 related rates. Uh, working on related rates. I do have some additional examples. I posted them in D2L. Uh, and we can look at those additional examples. Uh, but I was gonna open up the textbook now. So did anyone have any homework questions? I've got the chat window up. You can type those in the chat if you would prefer, if that's easier for you. Any particular, oh, I have instructor solutions manual. That would be handy. Uh, where is the book itself? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lecture slides. Maybe I just need to go over to ebook. So did anyone have any homework questions from the related rates in section 4.1? Maybe all of this getting the ebook up was not necessary. It's hard when you just had a test and you're like, eh, I want to focus on other stuff. All right, Haley, coming through in the clutch here. <laughs> well, let's see if we can come up with number 23. Okay. Fill rate. Oh, we have a cone example like this. So, but we'll do, we can do this one first. So I'm going to do, I got this procedure here that seems to work pretty well. Take a picture and then go over to my OneNote and let's get a new page here. And we'll paste. Whoa, it's really big. A little bit smaller. Nope, that was not what I wanted to. Why can't I like shrink it? There we go. Okay, 
So let's take a look here and try this example. We're going to try to do the same process we did last time, if you remember. We try to come up with an equation. We write down all of our given information, um, what we know is fixed, if there's anything that's changing, kind of write all that information down. Let's try to be specific and write down what it is we're looking forward to. And then we'll implicitly differentiate that, both sides with respect to t, which I don't remember, I think it was Albert asked you last time, where that's time. We're gonna differentiate with respect to time. So let's see here. A container in the form of a right circular cone has a radius of four meters and a height of 16 meters. There's a nice drawing there. Wow, this is a big cone. Four meters and 16 meters. That is really big. So maybe this is like some industrial thing, right? Uh, see the figure on the, well, the next page here. If water is poured in the container at a rate of 16 meters cubed per minute, 16 meters cubed per minute. That's a rate of change because it has the per minute. So what is that the rate of change of? A change of what? What is that? Can you tell from the units or from the description? If water is poured into the container at a constant rate of 16 cubic meters per minute. I, okay, I heard height. It is not height because the meters is cubed. Uh, Alexis, what did you answer? dv over dt. Yes, that's the symbol for it. What is, what is it the rate of change of? Do you know that? Volume. volume, volume, right, Albert, volume. Yep, it's the rate of change of volume. Um, two ways to know that. One is the units, cubic meters. Cubic means volume. So you can just, you can infer a lot from the units. Second is, you know, water is being poured in at that rate, right? So that's the amount of water. That's the volume of water. So that's the other way. So Alexis had some great notation. That's dv dt. Uh, how fast is the water level rising when the water is eight meters deep? So I'm gonna call that H equals eight meters. But now I have a question for you. Is that height of the water always eight meters or is that just a specific moment in time? So don't answer. Why don't you think about that? Is that constant or is that something that changes? So we'll just have that, maybe we'll plug that in at the end. So think about that for like five seconds here. So if I was quick with polls, we could do that. I am not quick with polls. So what do we think here? Sandra in the chat thinks that it is changing. Yeah. So. You'll notice here, there's even a dead giveaway. Yep, and Alexis is noting that it's increasing. How fast is the water level rising when the water is eight meters deep? Notice there's like when the water is eight meters deep, implying that it's not always eight meters deep. That's kind of a dead giveaway. So language is super important on these. Um, so this is not constant. So whatever equations I get, I don't wanna plug in eight right away because it is changing. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We have the volume of a cone. Let's write one more thing here before we dive in. Let's write in what it is we are looking for. It says how fast, how fast is the water level rising? That's what we're looking for, but I'd like some symbols for that. So find how fast the water level is rising. but I'd like some symbols for that. So what is that? Any ideas there Any for some calculus symbols? DH over DT. Nice, Christopher. DH over DT. Yep. Very good. All right. Good morning, Juan. Um, so what we need next then is we need an equation that relates all of these things that are changing. And they gave it to us this time. The volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. And that's not something you need to worry about memorizing if we had something like that. I mean, I assume you can find the volume of a box, but for a volume of a cone or a volume of a sphere or something like that, like, you know, we can look it up or I'll provide it for you. Um, we have a little bit of a problem right now because if I want to take the derivative of this, 
there's two variables on the right. And R is changing and H is also changing. So that's not good. What I need right here, in fact, let me, this is important enough to change colors. We need, this is not multivariable calculus. We don't have functions that are functions of two variables. Uh, that's Cal 3. We need a function of one variable. So somehow what I need to do is I need to get R in terms of H or H in terms of R. So usually we have another fact. I think we did this last time we had another fact. Does anyone know? You don't need to give me an answer for exactly what to put in there, but do you know what other fact we're going to use to somehow get R in terms of H or H in terms of R? The volume at that point or? No, because that it has to be a relationship that's always true. I think Brittany has a thought and then Nick. Would it be the radius? What about the radius? Because it says it has a four meter so radius. That is not constant though. So that four meter radius, I know what you mean. That's the, the radius of the cone, but that's not the radius of the water because the water is rising. So, so the radius of the full container is four and the height that's is 16. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna go, I see uh, Nick, do you have a thought? I was actually going to say the same thing for. Uh, yeah, so it, it seems like it should be four, but it can't. Now, Sandra, I don't know if you can expound on that. You said use the right triangle formula. I think we need a little more detail, but I like your thought. Can you share what you were thinking? Uh, actually, how about the similar triangle to have a formula? Right. So she's noticing here. Let me go over back over to this. She's noticing. I need to get some more workspace that if you look at the full cone itself, uh, the radius is four and the height is 16. That's the full cone. Oh, Sydney, do you have a question or did you have an answer? Yeah, I just have a quick question. So why do you, could you explain just really quick one more time why we don't use R and H? Like why can't we just differentiate it like we would as like Y? Yeah, that is a really good point. Um, let's, I don't know how far off the sidetrack to do that. So I'm gonna write some stuff down here and you can erase it if you want. So if we wanna find the rate of change of volume, mm -hmm. then we would have to differentiate that right-hand side with respect to T. Okay, which is fine, you can do that. So you get dV dt. Now what rule, you don't have to answer this anyway, anyway what rule would we have to use on the right-hand side? The product rule. Correct, because we have an R squared, which is a function, and H, which is both of them are changing. Mm -hmm. So this would be one third pi times two R times dr dt times H plus one third pi R squared times dh dt. So that's the product rule, derivative of the one third pi R squared, and then times H plus one third pi R squared times the derivative of H. So the issue here is we know dv dt we want to find dh dt but what in the world do we do with the rdt we'd have to like do some hard work to get that not that we couldn't get that but we'd, it would be extra labor to get that so it's it would more be harder than like correct. what we're about to do okay correct so it's more efficient to try to get your original equation in terms of just one variable in fact in terms of the variable you're looking for so we'll talk about that gotcha um, yeah, Thank so you. yeah, it's not that you can't do it. It's just, uh, it's just inefficient. So I'm gonna erase all this. <laughs> okay, so Sandra was talking about, about similar triangles. You'll notice we have the four and the 16, and then we have for our particular water depth, there's R and H. And I don't know if you remember, oh, question from Albert. Yes, sir. Uh, you're trying to find H? Or like available for H? Like, wait, I'm so confused. What we are trying to do right now is we want to either find R in terms of H so that I can get V as a function of H or find H in terms of R so I can get V just as a function of R. 
Uh, so you're using like two triangles to find R? Yeah, or H. We're trying, you'll see, you'll see. Be patient. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to like, where are we doing? I don't know where we're going. Why are we doing this? This doesn't make sense. And sometimes the first couple you have to kind of just follow and see. So I, those are good questions. So let's, let me see if I can clean that up without erasing the whole thing. Oh, there we go. Ah, that's so precise. That's so cool. Okay, so similar triangles. Hopefully this looks familiar. Um, you can make all these ratios where like four over 16 is equal to R over H. The, those similar triangles, if you need to do a quick Google of that, this is a common uh, strategy. So looking at similar triangles, um, it might be worth doing a quick review of that uh, if that's helpful. Uh, hopefully that looks familiar. Remember the ratios and that's not the only ratio. You could also do other ratios. Um, and so I have two options here. So to Albert's point here, I have two options. I could either solve for H and get it in terms of R or solve for R and get it in terms of H. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the right one. And I want you to think about why I made that choice as we're doing it. So I'm going to solve for R. So of course, four sixteenths is one fourth and that's R over H. And if I multiply by H, then R will be H over four. So let me go back to my volume formula. Volume now is just a function of H. It's one third pi times H over four squared times H. And if we clean that, clean that up, uh, four squared to be 16, 16 times three is 48. So we'll have pi over 48 times H cubed. So now the question is, why did I choose to get everything in terms of H? Does anyone have any idea? Brittany's hand is raised. What do you think, Brittany? Because we're trying to solve for dH dt. Exactly. Look up above. This is why I like to take a couple of minutes at the beginning and really carefully write down all the given information and what it is you're looking for, because it helps answer that question right there. If you're slow at the beginning and really clarifying, here's what I'm given, and then doing the nice symbols. Um, remember Alexis said, oh, that's dV dt. Knowing that that's dV dt says, well, that's a volume. I have to find a formula for volume then. Um, saying I'm trying to find how fast the height, the water level is rising and knowing, oh, that's dH dt, then I have to have everything in terms of H. So, so that's really the key. Yeah, go ahead, Mitch. Uh, why wouldn't the H be, on, uh, be multiplied by the pi instead of multiplied by the pi over 48? Um, so were you thinking of writing it as pi h cubed over 48? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's, those are equivalent. You can think of um, pi over 48 times h cubed. It could be h cubed over one, and then you can multiply those together and get it this way. The reason why I choose to write it the way I did is it's easier to differentiate if you think of it as a number times h cubed. So it's just a personal preference. You might be tempted to use the quotient rule otherwise with the pi h cubed over 48. And the quotient rule is like way too much here. It's gonna be overkill and it's gonna be a lot of extra work. So they're both correct mathematically. Um, I think it's just simpler. Does that, does that help? Yeah. Okay, good, good question. Okay, I think we are ready. We have V as a function of H. So let's take the derivative with respect to T of both sides. Um, I'm gonna, I've, I've written V parenthesis H like a function of H. So um, just keep in mind, I'm just gonna write the derivative just of V, but just remember it's, it's, a, it's a function of H. And then we'll take the derivative with respect to T of pi over 48 times H cubed. Uh, and the derivative of V with respect to T is just dV dt. And at this point right now, you should hopefully when you're doing stuff like, oh, right, we had that, that was up above. Like, oh, that's good. Like you should start seeing things that tie in with stuff you have previously. So that's good. Uh, all right, pi over 48 and then times the derivative of H cubed would be three H squared, but we're differentiating with respect to T. 
So chain rule, feel like we do the chain rule every single time now almost, and that's dh dt. I think we, I think we're ready. I think this looks good. Uh, we know dv dt. So to solve, we know dv dt was uh, 16 cubic feet per cubic meters per minute. Uh, I would not put units in when you're computing. The units will all make sense and they'll all work out. It'll just be a little clunky. Um, it, it just gets a little awkward. So I would not put units here. Uh, pi, I guess I could write it as pi over 16 because uh, 48 divided by three is 16. Uh, H, didn't we have H? Wasn't that given, wasn't H eight meters or something? Yeah, H was eight here. So now we can use our eight meters we can use our eight meters, which is not constant, but it is at the moment, at the moment we're considering H is eight meters. And so now it's okay to put that in. That's eight. Uh, and then we'll just uh, simplify. And then we'll have our DHDT. 16 equals pi over 16 times 64. Uh, 16 into 64 is four, so that's four pi dh dt. So dh dt will be 16 over four pi or four divided by pi. And I bet they want like decimal approximations here. So let's go ahead and do that. Four divided by pi, where's my pi? So about, morning Tavante, 1.27. Uh, some units here, units. Mm. What do we think? What do we think for units? I see Brittany, you have a hand. What are you thinking, Brittany, for units? Should be meters uh, cubed or per minute. Did you change your mind on the cubed? Do you want it to be cubed or not? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. You should not. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to know. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's all good. So what I like the per minute, right? It's a rate of change and our time unit above was per minute. Uh, and the key here is it's a height. It's just a distance. And so the distance would just be meters or feet or miles or whatever, not cubed. So the cubed is gonna be the volume. This can be the volume. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, are there any questions at all on this one? This was a really good one to bring up, Haley. Thanks for asking about this one. Could you go over how you did the um, uh, DH over DT back when you, I think you did the product rule? Oh, right here when I did the derivative, let me box yeah. in what I'm talking about. Yeah, so actually it is not the product rule. Um, because I just have a single function on the right. The pi over 48 is just a constant. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is I'm differentiating with respect to t, and this is an h. All so right. I do the regular derivative, you know, 3h squared, but h is not a t, so I have to do the chain rule. The chain rule is why I multiply by dh dt. So really here, this is going to happen on every single problem in this section you're gonna find rates of change. So you're gonna, you're gonna differentiate with respect to T. And so anytime you have a letter that's not a T, you tag on the D whatever DT because, it's the, because of the chain rule. Yeah. Is that convincing, Christopher? I don't know. Um, <laughs> not, not very convincing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about like, think about um, different, let's say we have y is equal to u cubed and you wanna take the derivative of y with respect to x. Mm -hmm. Well, the chain rule says that's three u squared times du dx because yeah. u, right? So that's what we're doing here, just different letters. Okay. That's exact, look okay. over here. You see it? Yeah, it's just weird because it's T's and H's and other stuff instead of Y's and X's and U's, but it's, it's exactly the chain rule. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. And that's a crucial skill to be comfortable with here. So it's good that you're asking about it because that's all of these questions all do this. They're all, you, you look at all the examples, they're all going to have this, all this, all of a sudden these D whatever DTs pop in and it's always from the chain. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay, I'm seeing none. Um, I do have, we do have some additional examples we could work on, um, but did anyone have any other homework questions that you wanted to ask about from the related rates 4.1? Haley is on top of it here. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, related rates. 39. Oh gosh, we have examples like all of these. Another snip, oh, wrong command. There we go. Nine. Okay, and let's pop back over here. Give myself some more workspace. Whoa, it's weird that it always pastes it in so big. Okay, uh, this one, there's no drawing. So we're gonna have to do our own drawing here. Uh, I think I remember Christopher asking about that last time. Sometimes you have a drawing, sometimes you gotta draw it yourself. A child, one meter tall is walking directly under a street lamp that is six meters above the ground. If the child walks away from the light at a rate of 20 meters per minute, how fast is the child's shadow lengthening? Ooh. Okay, so we have a stoplight, or not stoplight, uh, we have a, a lamp, right? Here's a light, yay, bright light. Bonus points for detailed drawings. <laughs> uh, child is, it's, well, this is six meters tall. The child is one meter tall walking away from the light. So here we have a detailed child, one meter tall, walking away from the light. If the child walks away from the light at a rate of 20 meters per minute, how fast is the child's shadow lengthening? So we need to draw the shadow here. The key is it's gonna come down from the light to the top of the child's head. And this distance right here is the length of the shadow. Okay. Whew. Okay, we don't have any letters, no variables here. So let's think about this. Is there something that we should, oh, Haley, you have a question. Yeah, so you said that the red is the length of the shadow, but shouldn't it be the other side? Because it says that the child is walking directly under the lamp, and so he's walking away, or... So would it be the other side, or no? No, so the child, like, starts out over here, and then walks away from the light, and so then the shadow is going to be, the light's going to be coming from behind the child, and the shadow okay. going to be in front of the child. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, back to my other question is about like, what should we label on here? What's changing? What, what should we make some variables for? Or maybe we just need one variable. I don't know. Any ideas? Think about what's, what's changing that we want to have some labels for. Like dx dt, right? But what is x? Yeah. So we gotta if we're gonna use to talk about dx dt, which makes sense. There's some rates of change here. Then we gotta talk about well, what's x then? So we gotta start there first before we do dx dt. I can see two things that I'm most interested in that I either have information about or I'm wondering about. Uh, I see Alexis, and then I think Haley, you have a thought too. So Alexis, what are you thinking? Um. You could do the child's height. As I don't, yeah, but that's just one though, right? The child isn't getting taller in the problem. <laughs> the child is hopefully getting taller, but not in the context of this problem. Haley, did you have a thought? Could you have the red be 
like A and then the other part be B and then could you do like a ratio or whatever like we did with the last problem? Maybe. So you're thinking like that? Yeah. Like B is the distance from the lamppost to the child and then mm -hmm. A is the length of the shadow. Yes. Okay. I think this is a good choice. And you can use different letters, whatever letters you want. Okay. So if you want to use X and Y, you don't like other letters, it's just fine. Okay, so we're gonna use A and B. So now we have this, now to um, Albert's point, we have this, like, do we have some DA, DT, DB, DT? Like what, what is this 20 meters per minute? So now that we've chosen some variables, what variable is the 20 meters per minute? You can type it out there or you can just you know, unmute yourself and say, what, what is the 20 meters per minute? D-A-D-T. You're close. It is not D-A-D-T. D-A, uh, it's going to be D-A plus B over D-T? No. It's also, it's similar though. You're, uh, I mean, you, you both are on the right track, but it is, it is neither of those. Mitch, uh, Mitch is correct. Yeah, it's. That's how fast he's moving away from the light. And so it's how fast B is changing. So B is increasing, moving away from the light. And so it's the rate of change of his distance from the light. So that's correct, Mitch, D, B, D, T, yep. I think that's all our given information. So let's, oh, oh, my internet connection is unstable. You know what? I bet I know why. Kids are on Xbox. Time to get on Google Wi-Fi and prioritize the computer. <laughs> okay. Sorry, dudes. Work is more important than Fortnite. Okay. They're just lucky I don't turn them off. They weren't coming down for dinner the other night. I'm like, well, I have a solution to that. Turn Xbox Wi-Fi off. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're trying to find how fast the child's shadow is lengthening. So and what would be... Oh, oh go ahead. Go ahead. So if that's if A is the length of shadow, then the A, B, T would be how fast the length is changing. Nailed and, it. Oh. Yep. 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 Perfect. Um, and so now you'll notice, I don't know if you caught Haley earlier, she's saying, oh, it looks like we can do some similar triangles again. And that is, that is exactly it. Um, the similar triangles are a little harder to see here. So we have the similar triangles here are the big triangle and the little triangle with the child. So we have six meters and then one meter. And we have A is the bottom side for the child's triangle. What's the bottom side for the big triangle? A plus B. That's correct. A plus B. And I think that's what you were getting at, Christopher, earlier about. It's kind of just something about A plus B is involved. So, yeah, that was a good thought. Um, and so we're just going to have to set up a ratio here. Um, I think I'm going to do, I don't know, I'm going to do one of my variables in the, in the numerator. So I'm going to do A plus B over six equals A over one. And so you can do ratios within, whatever you ratio you do within one triangle it has to be the same ratio within the other triangle. Or you can do ratios between the two triangles. If you wanted to do, you could do A over A plus B equals one over six. But now imagine differentiating that. You can use the quotient rule. Yeah, no. So just try to keep it simple. Look at the options. I like this one because, in fact, this one is really just one sixth times a plus b equals a. And that's a seems like a pretty good, you know, pretty easy to take derivative of, and looks like a pretty good way to do it. Um, I don't know if you remember doing, you know, doing application problems in algebra and other classes like that. A really common sentiment that I hear is like, you know, it, setting it up is always my hardest thing. Like once I get it set up, I can solve the algebra. And a lot of people feel the same way about these problems. Like once I get the equation, I can differentiate both sides and plug stuff in, like that's fine. 
Um, and that's pretty common. The biggest challenge is really the part we've done right now. And so that's why the practice that you're doing here, the fact that you all are here practicing along with these is great. That's really good. I did cross multiplication and I have five, I have B equals five A, would that be a problem? So I think what you did is uh, simplified this. So if we multiply everything by six, A plus B equals six A, and then B is equal to five A, why not? Yeah, that's even better, right? That's even better. Oh, in fact, oh gosh. This is going to be super easy. So now we're going to differentiate. That was a great idea, Christopher. We're going to differentiate both sides with respect to T. So the derivative B with respect to T is DB dt. That should be ringing a bell. Wait a minute. We already talked about DB dt. And then the right side is 5 times DA dt. And you're like, wait a minute. That's what I'm looking for. All right, look up above. That's why we took that time up above to write down stuff. Oh, I have, I have dB dt, and I'm trying to find dA dt. Sweet. So we are good. We can just plug stuff in. dB dt was 20. And then 5 times dA dt. So dA dt will be 4. Nice. We need some units, though, but but the ADT is four. Any thoughts on units? For what? Always have to have units here. Is it minutes? There's minutes involved, but it is not minutes. So I can write minutes right here, but it is not four minutes. It's a rate of change. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Oh, meters per minute. Yeah, meters per minute. Yep. Is that what you're gonna say, Chantal? Yeah. Okay. So four meters per minute is correct there. Yeah. If you're having a little lag, I think that might be on my end here. So my apologies. Okay. Are we good on that one, Haley? Yeah, quick yes. question. Okay. Uh, Albert, yeah, go ahead, Albert. Um, how come you solve for B? Eh, it doesn't matter. Or, uh, okay, can, either way, it's fine. Yeah, you can solve for A. So uh, okay. if we took, yeah. yeah, if we took this equation and said A is one fifth B, and we took the derivative with respect to T on both sides, I did not leave myself enough workspace there, uh, you get DA DT is one fifth times DB DT. So that's one fifth times 20 and four. Yeah. So there's, yeah, once you get that equation, you could simplify it. And I think um, Christopher had a great idea like, hey, you know what? Let's simplify this equation before we take the derivative. Uh, and so you can do whatever you want. All these are equivalent. Like this, this equation that we have up here, I can't like point to it because you can't see where I'm pointing. This equation is equivalent to this equation, and that's equivalent to this equation, and that's equivalent to this equation, and that's equivalent to this equation. They're all equivalent. So whatever one you want to use is totally fine. It's totally fine. Any other questions on that one? All right, let's do another one. I've got some extra examples here. I did post these. Uh, in D2L, if you don't have them, you can kind of print these out later for you if you would like. Uh, they are, I uh, like zoom, super zoomed in here, under the content, and I think I put them under this unit four, uh, extra 4.1 examples. So under the content, if you want to print these out or kind of have them handy, um, I've got them under the extra 4.1 examples. So we did the knock one. Let's do this rocket one. Um, it looks very similar. Oh, I like cut off. Oh, I fixed these pictures for yours. So yours will look better than mine. My font got all cut off here. Um, this one's interesting because it, it looks like another right triangle one, um, but it's got a different question you'll see. So we have this rocket 
uh, shown below is riding, rising vertically at 880 feet per second. Ooh, here's that when, when it is 4,000 feet up. How fast is the angle of elevation changing at that instant? Question, Sydney? I actually just had like a general question about the note. So when I was um, watching the videos yesterday, she was talking about something called like an applet. What is that? Hmm. So she might have, she didn't tell me about that. Uh, the applets are like little things you can interact with on the screen, like little, maybe little sliders and stuff. And I have not been watching her videos because I don't have enough time. So there might be an applet that like went with the problem. Yeah. Like, hey, if you want to open the applet, you can like play around with this and to like show little sliders. Like if there's a ladder, like, oh, you can slide the ladder and watch what's happening. Like that's what an okay. applet is. It's something you can interact with. So I can maybe shoot her a quick email, add it to my, oh, thanks a lot. Do we need to add, adding to my to-do list. Or no? no, no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're cool to kind of help you visualize what's happening. So okay. that's what applets are for to kind of help you visualize things. So they're like learning tools. They're okay, not, I was like, just wondering. I didn't yeah. know if it was like something that we had to do. Nope. nope. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, so let's see here. Let's look at our, our rocket here. Our rocket, again, my font's got cut off. Rocket, camera. Uh, this is the launching, launching pad or whatever is over here. Um, what in, so in this particular drawing, there's lots of stuff that's changing. But let's focus on the stuff that we would be interested in that's relevant to our question. So I want to add some labels. So is there anything on here that we can label? Oh, and there's more information here that this, uh, this is 3000 feet. We have a camera angle over here and then the launching pad, there's 3000 feet between those two. So is there anything that we can label on here that's constant or are there things we should put in as variables that will be relevant for us? So what catches your eye for what we can label on our picture? We know that dy over dt is um, 8, 800 feet per second only when y is 4,000. Okay, I like your thought, but you haven't told me what y is. So that's where I am. I'm one step before you. So what are you implying that y is on the picture? Do you know what that is, Christopher? No. Because I like your thought. I don't disagree that the 4,000 is Y and the 880 is DY, DT. But I need to know what Y is first before I can start calling those DY, DT, and Y. So what is Christopher kind of, it's a good thought. What is Christopher naturally thinking is representing Y? Does anyone know? So are we using um, like trigonom trigonometric uh, functions? Maybe. You're getting ahead of us. Oh. We got to slow down. All we want to do is label the drawing right now. So Alexis is right. Why is 4,000 at that moment? But you haven't told me on the picture, what is represented by why? Is it the line from the launching pad to the rocket? Correct. It's the height here. It's the height of the mm -hmm. rocket. Whoops, I used H. It's what well, Christopher wants to use Y. That's fine. It's totally fine. So you got to slow down before you start writing DY, DT and all this stuff. You got to say, well, Y represents that height. That the, the height of the rocket. Now Christopher has nailed it. DY DT is indeed 880 feet per second. Uh, is that positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? It's, it's going up. It's increasing. So it's increasing at 880 feet per second. And then Y is equal to 4,000 feet just at that moment, right? It's not, it's not always 4,000. Yeah, it's not always 4,000. Okay, uh, that's excellent. There's one other thing that's changing that is also relevant to our problem. So what is the other thing that we need to label that's also changing that's relevant to our question? The angle is changing or angle of elevation. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we can use, a lot of times we use theta. Uh, you can use whatever symbol you want. It's just a symbol, but a lot of times theta is used for the symbol. So we are trying to find how fast the angle is changing 
So what is that symbol? How fast the angle is changing? D theta or DT, right? Or Excellent. Yep. Excellent. D theta DT. How fast is changing? It is always some kind of DT. And in this case, it's how fast the angle is changing. Okay, now let's go back to Christopher's point. We want something that relates these things, that relates an angle to sides of a triangle. Pretty sure that's gonna be some trigonometry. So there's multiple choices here, but there's one best choice that relates. We wanna relate just the things that we have or that we're interested in. We can use the tangent. Correct, that is right, Sandra. Tangent theta is the best option, and that's y over 3,000, opposite over adjacent. Okay, that's, again, this is the key. This is the hardest part for people is kind of slowing down, labeling your picture, trying to write down the symbols, write down what it is you're looking for, and then getting that equation. That's usually the hardest part. So does anyone, are there any questions that occur to you right now getting to this point? Okay. Uh, now I think we're ready then if there are no questions, we're ready to differentiate both sides Oops. with respect to time. Okay. Um, ooh, tangent. Who remembers the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Nice. Good job, Mitch. Secant squared theta. Now, remember, chain rule. We're differentiating with respect to t, so we need to multiply by d theta dt. Every time we do this, every time we differentiate and it's not a t, we got to multiply by the chain rule there. Um, the y over 3,000, don't do quotient rule. If, if it helps, really think of that as 1 over 3,000 times y. Much simpler. It's just a number being multiplied by y. So that'll just be one over 3,000 times dy dt. Okay, we, uh, we're close. Let me, just, uh, let me just solve for d theta dt. Keep in mind that secant squared is one over cosine squared theta d theta dt. So that's one over 3,000 dy dt, so d theta dt, which is what we're looking for, will be cosine squared theta over 3,000 times dy dt. So this is good, but there's a bit of a problem. So we're good, we're, we're looking good. What is the bit of a problem that we have? We don't have theta. Right, so how in the world do we figure out cosine squared theta, right? We don't have theta. So let's do that off to the side. Are we going to have to use the inverse, tan uh, the inverse um, function? Um, we could, we could. There is a better way, but we could oh. do that. Yeah, that's not a bad idea because now at that moment in time, we have our theta, the 3000 is fixed. At that moment in time, we know the y is 4,000, right? right? So why, why can't I use the triangle right now to find the cosine? Oh, because you don't have the hypotenuse. You have to use right? Right? Yeah, exactly. We have to do 3,000 over the hypotenuse. Well, let's just use the Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse. So your thought of doing the inverse the arc tangent to get the angle and then taking the cosine of that is not crazy. That, that's also mm. valid. That makes sense. Um, I think it's better to use just the Pythagorean theorem. And I don't know right. if you know, yeah, if you know this Pythagorean triple, this is a three, four, five, right? Triangle. Yeah, it's 5,000. It's going to be 5,000. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, so back over to our d theta dt, that's uh, three-fifths. So cosine squared is three-fifths. 
fifths squared over 3,000 times dy dt. Oh, and we have dy dt. What am I saying? We know dy dt. That was, how fast was it going? 880, right? It's going, it's flying up at 880 feet per second. That's dy dt. So we know that that's 880. I feel like that 880 is like a math problem. Like it's designed to simplify nicely, but I'm just too lazy to simplify this right now. So <laughs> I'm just gonna do, let's see, nine over 25, divide that by 3000, and then multiply all that by 880. That is not right. Oh, that's right. Because my calculator is smarter than me and I did not do correct order of operations. This is even worse than watching someone do a calculator. You're just watching me stare at my phone. <laughs> uh, the fraction is not very good. So let's just write the decimal 0 0.1056, something like that. Um, units, ooh, units, something per second, right? Because it was, it was feet per second. Um, I'll give you a hint here on units. It's probably not what your first inclination is. Radian? Yeah, good one, Sandra. So most people think angle, they think degrees. But nowhere in here do we have degrees. Degrees is like an extra, you have to have that mentioned somewhere. So this is really unitless, which means radians per second. Um, and this feels, this might feel like a very small number. How many radians per second is it going? But remember, it's like the angle of the camera. And so that angle, it's not like the camera is going zoop. Right, it's just slowly increasing as it follows the rocket up. And in fact, the higher the rocket goes, the slower that angle is increasing. So that's your applet for today there, Sydney. It's like my arm on camera. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that one was a little bit interesting because it was an angle that we were looking at, not just the sides of the triangle. So any questions on that one? Man, I'm telling you, I am getting so old that all this sitting and teaching lately has not been good. Like you are probably going to see me standing because like my hips so like, I'm yeah, only, me too. I'm only like in my forties. Come on. This is killing me. Uh, let's see if we can do one more. Oh, he does another, we did, I don't know. We did some of these like homework. Oh, see, look, ah. <laughs> Look at example seven. That's like the homework question. <laughs> so I knew we had, I had one like that. Well, I think I took that one out. Here's another one. I think it's, I think I changed the example numbers. I think it's like example six or something in, in the handout that I posted. Um, let's see if we can at least get this one set up for you. It's already 1025. So I don't know how, how much time you have. So let's see if we can get this one set up. Again, my font got all cut off here, shoreline. So you have, you've, you've seen these where um, you have the light kind of spinning, spinning around on the lighthouse. And if you can kind of track its spotlight, it moves along the shoreline and then spins around. And so we have a beacon of a lighthouse one kilometer. So we could, we could label that one kilometer. The lighthouse isn't moving. So that's always one kilometer from the shore. Revolves five times per minute. So that's something about the revolution there. Shines a spot of light on the shore. How fast is the spot of light moving? Oh, geez, when theta equals 45 degrees. Gosh. So I have my theta labeled. Um, what else should we label on our picture? Thank you. 
the angle 45? That's not constant. So I don't want to put 45 degrees. I'm going to put it off to the side. Theta is equal to 45 degrees at that moment. But you see what I mean how it's, we only want to label stuff on the picture if it's constant. Or if it's variable, put a variable there. And we already, we have a variable for the angle. So we have the theta there that that's changing. What else? Any other ideas for what's, what's changing? 90 degrees. Well, that's going to be kind of, that's like an extra question. We'll hold that oh. thought. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We'll hold that thought. We'll come back to that one. There's one other very important thing I need to label on the picture. Can we label the distance between the shoreline and the spotlight? Correct. The reason we want to label, oh, Alexis? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Did, did Haley? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we want to label some kind of distance because that will let us do the speed. Um, we have this five times per minute. What is that? What is that? Five times per minute. The revolutions. Yeah. What, what is changing at a rate of five times per minute? Would that relate to the um, X, what we have um, labeled as X? Uh, it does not, not directly. The rotation of the beacon. Yeah, it's the angle. Theta is actually doing like five revolutions per minute. So this is actually the rate of change of theta. Well, those units are weird there, five times per minute. So how can I make that into a rate of change of an angle? If it goes around five times per minute, how can I actually get it in terms of some angular thing? We would have to use conversion to radians. Yeah, I would convert to radians, Brittany, as well. So what's one time around? Two pi. Two pi. And so five times, five times two pi would be 10 pi radians. That would be going around five times. So 10 pi radians per minute. And now I have it as a, now that's a rate of change of an angle. Uh, let me see here, what else? What are we looking for? How fast is the spot of light moving? So we did our nice drawing. We labeled everything on the drawing. So now what is it we're looking for? How fast is the spot of light moving? DX over DT. That's right, yeah, like DX, DT. That was why we labeled this X because X is, is getting bigger. X is, as the spotlight moves along the shoreline, X is getting bigger. And so we wanna find how fast X is changing. What we need now is we need some equation that relates theta and x, because those are the two things that we're interested in. We need an equation. Why don't you take 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, see if you can write down an equation that relates theta and x, and hopefully only those, like no additional variables in there. So take 15 seconds, see if you can write down an equation that relates those two. All right, so anyone got a good option here for an equation that relates theta and x together? Tangent of theta equals x over one, but you could just write it as x. Sure, sure, let's write it as x over one just so we kind of know where it's coming from, but you're exactly right. Did everybody see that? Tangent theta opposite over adjacent. And then Haley makes a good point, like, let's go ahead and simplify that. We can just write it as tangent theta equals x. Yeah, very good. So you're, again, you're looking for an equation that relates the things you are interested in. That's what you're looking for. Uh, and now I think we're ready to go. Differentiate both sides with respect to theta.
And then let's see here, tangent theta will be secant squared theta and then d theta dt. And the x dt on the right hand side. And I think this one is actually easier than the last one we did because we actually have theta this time. Right, last time we had the sides of the triangle, we had to figure out uh, the sides of the triangle, but we can actually do it this time. Uh, secant squared, that's secant squared of 45 degrees. D theta dt is 10 pi radians per minute. That's equal to dx dt. Uh, I am not good with my secant squareds. I always have to convert cosine squared of 45 degrees. Uh, what is cosine? Cosine is square root of two over two or one over square root of two. I'm gonna do one over square root of two because then when I square it, I just get one half. This is one over one half times 10 pi equals dx dt. And then we're good. So it should be 20 pi dx dt. And what is that approximately? Clear, 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 clear all. 20 pi, so about 62.8. What are the units here? Oh, the units are a little hidden here. 62.8, it's per minute. It's a little subtle. Does anyone know what it is? What is that unit for dx dt? What per minute? Kilometer per minute. That is correct. Yep. Yep. Kilometers per minute. Um, that seems really fast, by the way, but you have to remember this spotlight is doing. 10 pi radians, so it's doing five revolutions per minute. And so that spotlight is whipping along the shoreline really quickly. So that's not unreasonable for that to like be a really big number because it's, it's spinning 10 times per minute. So that spotlight is gonna be moving pretty fast, especially as it's far away. Like when you're right on the shoreline, it's gonna, like when you're perpendicular, it's gonna be moving pretty slow. And then the, the further you go, the further, the faster that's going along the shoreline. All right, well, that is it for us today. Our time is up. Um, I will post in D2L the videos that I'd like you to watch, but I think we're just gonna keep going um, and try to watch, let's see, for Tuesday. So my schedule um, changed a little bit. We talked about this, that I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna, just gonna do two days a week. So moving forward, we're just gonna do Tuesday, Thursday. Um, even if we have quizzes or exams, we will always meet Tuesday, Thursday. We're gonna try to get on that Every week we'll meet Tuesday, Thursday. So next Tuesday, I think we're gonna need to watch, we might need to watch two sections worth. Let's see how, many, how much that is. So let's take a look here. Uh, so critical numbers, abs, I should put the length of these. Let's see how long that one is. So 4.2, does it give us the length here? That's a half hour. I should find, ooh, that one's, ooh. Yeah, these are pretty similar though. So Rolle's theorem, 20 minutes. I think we can watch all of those for Tuesday. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's plan on watching 4.2 and 4.3 for Tuesday. Um, and then I wish I could like pop this up. Maybe I'll just, let me do this right now. I'm just gonna type this up just so you can see my plan. Yes, Sydney, that is my plan. I think that will be okay. We're gonna have to be like flexible with each other and kind of plans might change, but tentatively uh, watch
4.2 and 4.3 for Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, we'll go homework questions and examples from 4.2 and 4.3. Thursday, we'll do homework questions and then we'll do um, um, examples. We'll see it maybe just 4.4. We'll kind of see where we are, but then I'll post a quiz after Thursday's class on um, 4.1 through 4.3. So not the 4.4. So the idea is you should be work on homework and be ready to answer questions or ask all your questions by Tuesday. Um, we can go over them. We can go over additional questions on Thursday. That would be through 4.3. And then I'll post a quiz after class and you can have all day to work on it um, and submit to the Dropbox. And that quiz will be the first three sections in chapter four. So I think this will be good. So you should, hopefully you've watched 4.1 already. We did some extra examples today. And then 4.2 and 4.3 we'll talk about on Tuesday. Any questions about the plan? Email me questions, or if you haven't been on the Discord, that's kind of helpful too. Um, I know a few people have signed up and gotten on there, but the nice thing about that is the more people that are on there, uh, when you make a comment, then I can reply and everybody sees it. And so that's kind of nice because then everybody can see it. If you have homework questions, my, my thought is that people can use this for homework questions because you might post something and then somebody else might have an idea. You're all going to need to help each other too because um, I can't do everything. So, you know, if you can post a question there, other people might have an idea. So I'm hoping that that becomes real interactive. So I would really encourage you to use that. And I think the more you do, that can be more familiar. Um, and then there is a, a, the ability to voice chat there. So when I'm on my office hours, um, we might be able to pop up there and have a little quick voice chat as well if you're working on something. So, so keep, in there, keep an eye on that. I think that's gonna be a good option as well. All right, I'm gonna sign out and like, stretch my hips <laughs> like it's so tight here i will see you tuesday if not before if i see you individually but otherwise i'll see you tuesday all right everybody take care enjoy your weekend